Greetings, brothers and sisters. Um, it is a privilege, a wonderful privilege, to gather with you this morning, to fellowship with you, and also to preach the word of God, or to bring the word of God to you. We will be reading from Psalm 121. And our theme this morning is God, the creator of heaven and earth, watches over us. Let us therefore put our trust in him. God, the creator of heaven and earth, watches over us. Let us therefore put our trust in him. Let us pray together. We thank you, our Lord and our Heavenly Father, for being with us throughout the week. We thank you for guiding us and for leading us, that you kept us safe and that you protected us, and that we are here this morning, and we have come so that we can glorify your name and we can worship you. We pray that you may be with us and that by your Holy Spirit you may guide us as we listen to your word, that you may cause our hearts to receive your word. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We read from Psalm 84, verses 1 to 12. And if we all have found it, it reads as follows. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest. For herself where she may lay her young at your altars O lord of hosts my king and my god blessed are those who dwell in your house ever singing your praise salah blessed are those whose strength is in you in whose heart are the highways of zion as they go through the valley of baka they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Salah. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Grace and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. And brothers and sisters, we are going to sing Psalm 98b. And I ask that we stand as we sing this psalm. It says 98B. E. Yes. Okay. Um, 
I think Chris someone. Scott. Yes, please. To the Lord, O oh, sing a new song for the wonders he has done. His right hand and arm most holy have for him the victory won. It around the earth was seen with the blast of horn and trumpet. Shout before the Lord the King, let the sea resound with praises, earth with all its people sing. And the, and the Lord, re, wait, uh, we've, we've sung it, should we leave it at that? Yeah, I do not know which uh, tune uh, it yeah, is. I don't know either. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, while we remain standing, we are going to do our confession of faith. I do not know whether you do it, you say it together or I'm the one who says it. You say it and we'll, okay. we'll follow you. I believe, believe in God, the Father Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth, earth and, and in Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, his only begotten Son, Son, our Lord, Lord who was conceived Lord, by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born Son of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered Son, under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We find the reading of God's law. We may be seated as we read God's law from Exodus chapter 20. Exodus 20, we read from verses 1 to verse 17. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water underneath the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male servant or your female servant or your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates for in six days the lord made heaven and earth the sea and all that is in them 
and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and, ma and your mother that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house, shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his maid servant, or his male servant, or his female servant, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. Amen. Amen. And we are going to sing Psalm 51a. Psalm 51a as we respond to the law of God, or to the reading of the law of God. Can I suggest that we maybe just chant it? That we? We chant it. We all read it together. That we all read oh, it together. Okay. okay. 51. So you're suggesting that we don't sing it, we read it. Because you don't know that we read oh. it. Okay. That we all read it together. And because we don't know the it's words of, oh, the, of, okay. the, of the music. <clears throat> okay. We can read together. Should we um, stand? Okay, you, um, we can read while we're sitting. Okay. Right, so and then how many verses are we going to we're read? We're going to read verses 1, 2, 3, and 4. 1, one 3, and 4. 1, okay. 2, 3, one, two, and, three four. and 4. Okay. Yes. God, God be merciful God be to me. To me. Uh, on, on your, your love, love I rest my, my plea. plea. By your vast abounding grace. grace. My, my transgressions, transgressions all erase. erase. From, From the stain, stain of every sin, wash and, and make me clean within. within. For my, my sins before me rise, always present to my eyes. I have sinned against, against you alone. alone. In your, your sight I've evil done. So, so your words are broken too. Righteous, righteous are your judgments, judgments too. Truly I was born in sin, sinful when conceived within. Surely you desire to find faithfulness in heart and mind. You will deep within my heart, wisdom unto me impart. O oh, with hyssop sprinkle me, and from sin I clean will be. Wash me from its stain and so. I will be whiter than the snow. Make me hear joy's cheering voice. Let the bones you crush rejoice. Let us bow our heads in prayer. We thank you, our Lord, that we can come to you. And this is not because we are able to or of our own accord but you make us able to come into your presence for O oh Lord while we were sinners you loved us for not even one of us can stand here and say I have not sinned for we all have sinned before you as we read your law we see how sinful we are before you for O oh Lord it shows us how incapable we are of keeping your law. We pray this morning that, O oh Lord, you may forgive us our sins. We thank you for Jesus Christ, through whom we can come unto you, through whom we have gained access, and through whom we have become your children. Pray that you be with us and that you may guide us with your Holy Spirit to honor you to live in accordance to your will. Amen. Amen. We read from John, the first, the first epistle of John, chapter 1, verses 5 to 10. The first epistle and not the gospel. Which chapter, sorry? 
first john chapter 1 verses 5 to 10 This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Amen. Um, we are supposed to be singing Psalm 1 as we prepare for the sermon. Uh, but um, if it is okay with you, uh, brothers and sisters, we are going to read it together again okay. as we stand. 1A. Yes. Psalm 1. Yes, I think it's 1A. Yeah, it just says Psalm 1. And we are going to read verses 1, 2, and 3. Okay. That man is blessed who does not walk as wicked men advance, nor stand where sinners meet, nor sit, where scorners pose as wise. Instead, he is the one who makes the Lord's law his delight. And in that law, he meditates by day and in the night. He is like a deeply planted tree beside a water stream, which in its season bears its fruit, whose leaves stay fresh and green. In all he does, he will succeed. The wicked are not so, but they are like scattered shaft, swept by the winds that blow. The wicked, therefore, do not stand. When time of judgment comes, no will sinners stand among assembled righteous ones. Because the Lord, the righteous, loves the path and walk he knows. The wicked walk a different path, that to his destruction goes. You may be seated. <coughs> Our theme, as I said before, is God, the creator of heaven and earth, watches over us. Let us, therefore, put our trust in him. We read from Psalm 121. Psalm 121, verses 1 to 8. Our focus will be on verse 2 and 3. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going 
out and you're coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. <coughs> As I said before, brothers and sisters, our theme is God, the creator of heaven and earth, watches over us. Let us therefore put our trust in him. Life is full of uncertainties. Last year, this time, we had just made our New Year's resolutions. But little did we know that the pandemic would disrupt our plans, and our lives. In March, when the president addressed us, some of us most probably thought, only 21 days and everything is back to normal. Some even thought, I will do all in my power to stay safe. But for some, the concern was not mainly to be safe from the pandemic or from the virus and they could and they could stay home and enjoy their investments their riches they could work from home and get paid and some got paid even without working however during the time and even now there are breadwinners who lost their jobs there are fathers and mothers who do not know how they are going to look at their families because they cannot or they can no longer provide. There are families who go to bed hungry and still do not know when and from where their next meal will come. And when we look at this, we see that as a nation, we need help. We see that as a nation, we have a great need for help. We do not know the author of Psalm 121. We do not know who the author is, but we know that God is the primary author. When you look at verses 1 and verse 2, the author makes use of the first person pronouns, asking and answering the questions asked, or rather the question asked. And when we start from verses 3 to verse 8, it is as though someone else is speaking and assuring the psalmist of where their help is going to come. And the psalmist does not look up to the hills in hope or with hope that his help will come from the hills. It is almost like when you have to walk somewhere at night knowing very well that there are dangers outside. Knowing that you might get robbed, you might get assaulted, or you might get killed. Especially when we take into consideration the world that we live in. And this will cause you to fear and it will cause you to not have the confidence to walk outside and reach your destination. Thus the psalmist does not look to the hills for help. But it is fear and it is worry that directs his, heart, his eyes to the hills. He does not know what to expect as he walks through or on those hills. As he walks there and he heads to Jerusalem, these are dangerous hills which inflict fear on the one who travels on them. If you remember the parable of the Good Samaritan, the scriptures say he was walking down from Jerusalem and going to Jericho. And it says he fell among thieves while walking down the hills and these are the th these are the hills about which the psalmist is talking these are the hills which the psalmist looks at as he walks to jerusalem to a place of worship 
and to give his sacrifices to the Lord, he has to pass these dangerous hills where he might get robbed. These hills where thieves might assault him, where they might kill him. Robbers and thieves are most probably lied there in wait for people who are going to Jerusalem. Because those who are going to Jerusalem have their sacrifices with them. As they are going to worship the Lord, they have their money and they have, they have their sacrifices. Thus they would lie there in wait so that they could rob them. When they have rainy weather, the hills would be very slippery. And when it was hot, on those hills it would be scorching hot. Thus the one on the pilgrimage has a reason to fear. The psalmist does not know how he will make it on the hills. As he looks up, his heart is filled with fear. He is on his way to worship. He is on his way to Jerusalem. He is on his way to the temple of the Lord. Yet his heart is filled with fear when he looks at the journey that lies ahead. The storms of life, the uncertainties, our problems and our troubles, our tomorrow, I do not know your storms, neither do you know mine. And they have a tendency to take all our attention and our energy and they instill fear in our hearts. Where do we go for help? From where does our help come? From where does our help come as we face tomorrow? As we face the future? And the, uh, the psalmist to this answers and says, My help comes from the Lord who created heavens and earth. Looking at the hills which bring fear into his heart. He remembers who God is. And he remembers the word of God. That though I may fear the hills, however they were created. They did not just appear from anywhere. And God who created the hills did not only create the hills. But he created heaven and earth. All this was created by the Lord and the God who and the and the Lord and the God who made it all, who made everything, is my helper. He is the one who keeps watch over me. When we look at or when we pay attention to Psalm 121, the word keep or the word watch depending on which uh, translation you have, we find it six times. Uh, that is, if we include uh, verse number five, where it says the Lord is your keeper. Uh, if we do not include verse number five, then we find it five times. In verse three, if you can look at verse three with me, it says, He who keeps you will not slumber. In verse four, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Verse 5. The Lord is your keeper. Verse 7. The Lord will keep, will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. And verse 8. The Lord will keep your going out. And you're coming in. From verses 3 down to verse 8, we are assured of the presence of the Lord at all times and in every circumstance of our life. We are assured that He keeps us and He watches over us. Matthew 10 verse 30 
tells us that even our hairs are numbered. Something that we do not even think about. This is something that I never think about. But should I count my hair? But the it, your hair is numbered. And there is no point in our lives where the Lord is not watching over us and is not seeing what is happening in our lives. He knows our yesterday. He knows our today. And even what we do not know, our tomorrow, the Lord knows our tomorrow. When a security company is hired to guard a certain place or a building, at night, preferably, they, uh, they, they usually, the, the security guards would, will usually um, check the coast to see, okay, the bosses are not here or the bosses are not around. Okay, I'm just going to sleep, even if for a few minutes. Let me just sleep. And we do this, or rather the security guards will do this, because they are human and they grow weary. And we all do this because we are human and we grow weary. But the psalm says to us, the Lord does not sleep. He does not slumber. He is not man that he should lie. He is not like the other gods who need to be woken up. Do you remember the prophets of Baal when they were with uh, prophet Elijah? Where well, he said, perhaps your God is sleeping. Scream louder. Cry louder. He does not sleep. He does not need to be woken up. But this does not mean, like the prosperity preachers would put it, that we will have no trouble in this world. That is not what it means. It means that whatever we go through, and whenever we go through, God is always with us. It means that no evil can befall us, and nothing that the Lord does not allow will happen to and with us. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, God saved us that we may be kept in this life and that he may keep us until our glorification when we are with him in heaven. God is our help. He watches over us and he keeps us. The fear of the psalmist is shut down and he becomes confident not in himself or in his, on his strength, but he becomes confident in the help of the Lord who created the heavens and the earth. Nothing in the day nor at night shall strike us, for the Lord is with us. Just as our shade never leaves us, the Lord never leaves us. And he has said in his word, I will never leave you nor forsake you. What hills are you facing this morning? Do you feel like giving up? Are you afraid? The word of God says, He is your keeper. And since He is your keeper, you can put your trust in Him. God has also given us the Holy Spirit who gives us faith to trust in God. Therefore, we do not fear as we face our troubles and our hills. The Spirit of God assures us of our salvation in Jesus Christ and of the Lord's care for us. And it assures us that God watches over us. Let us put our trust in him that we do not, knowing that we do not have the strength to go on on our own. And he is the one who provides us with the strength. Our trusted friends and families are not always there. Though they might want to be there, sometimes we call them and they are not available. 
The Lord is always there. He is always available. The psalmist was on his way to Jerusalem. Most probably on his way to worship. And yet he was afraid. And the Lord assures the psalmist of his care. And as we face the pandemic, we have so many uncertainties and fears. We do not know where to go or what to do. We are not even able to meet together and pray. We fear for our lives and for the lives of our loved ones. And we can look unto the Lord. We can rest on his everlasting love, care, and strength to protect us. Let us trust him who has saved us in Jesus Christ. The president will most probably address us again on the 15th. We look at our situation and we see uncertainties. We see a reason to worry as we look at our nation. And this is our hill. We do not know what to expect. We do not know how many are going to die as a result of COVID-19. How many are going to die as a result of hunger, of child abuse, and gender-based violence. Though there may be these uncertainties, and reasons to worry, we can be certain and have assurance of the presence of the Lord who keeps watch over us. And this is our only comfort in life and in death, that we belong to the Lord, that we belong to him who watches over us. Whether we live or we die, we are the Lord. While on earth, God watches over us. And when we shall die and leave this earth, he shall still be with us. And there will he glorify us. Amen. Amen. Let us bow our heads as we pray. We come before your throne, our Lord and our Heavenly Father. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you spoke to each and every one of us this morning in the way that you spoke to us, giving us hope, guiding us and teaching us to trust in you because you keep watch over us. We do not have the confidence and we do not have the strength to carry on. Lord, we are grateful for the privilege of being your children because we can put our trust in you. We know that our help comes from you. Pray our Lord and our Heavenly Father, for you know the challenges that each and every one of us is facing. It may be at work, it may be in our families. It may be the pandemic that the whole world is facing now. No, Lord, our hearts fear. For as we direct our eyes to these hills, as we direct our minds and our hearts to these hills, then our hearts are filled with fear. Thank you, however, that we know that we can trust in you and that you watch over us. Pray that you may give us the confidence to face tomorrow. Confidence, O oh Lord, to carry on and to go on, trusting in you, knowing that our help comes from you. All this we pray in the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, at this time, brothers and sisters, we are going to bring our collections. And as uh, Guy has said,
that uh, the collections are going to the expenses of the church. I don't know if we have um, those who do it by EFT or is it only cash? So EFT, we've we've got a zapper, but we haven't got a um, we haven't got the barcode for for today. Oh, so okay. if you haven't got cash, you're welcome to do an EFT. You're welcome to do an EFT um, or do a zapper next time. Okay. Okay. I think I think we've all had that. Um. So we are going to sing or we are going to do together um but now that we have read okay we are going to stand up and together we are going to read psalm 121 c psalm 121 c from the psalm book uh we can stand as we do this Yes, all three verses. Unto the hills I lift my longing eyes. Whence comes my aid? The Lord's my help. The heavens and the earth by Him were made. Your foot from stumbling He will always keep. The one who guards your life will never sleep. He who keeps Israel slumbers not nor sleeps by, by night, night or day. day. The Lord, Lord keeps you a shade on your right hand. The, the Lord will say throughout the day the sun will never shine nor will the moon afflict you in the night. night. You will be safe protected by the Lord by, by His control from every evil that may come your way, he'll keep your soul. While you go day out and in your door, the Lord will keep you now and evermore. And um, I don't know if you, uh, if um, you brothers and sisters know the tune for this one, the doxology, Blessed Be the Lord. Yeah, we do. Okay. Can we sing that one? Blessed be the Lord, uh, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Let all the people say Amen. Um, yes, we can sing that one. I do not know. What, what, what number is it? Um, I think uh, you did not put a number for me here on this one. Oh, we haven't got we haven't got it in this book. Okay. I don't think. Okay. In that case, as we remain standing, um, we will do the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.